story and then the mascot and if you haven't checked out my blog already you should do that mascot uh, videos.com and uh, yeah I'm gonna have a whole bunch of food and lime and sour tutorials and a whole bunch of color grading tutorials for Davinci and Edit and uh, yeah just check it out feel free check it out on possibly the best blog on the internet so today what I want to talk about is um, what is the difference between the color correction and the color grading and what is this Alicia Kill you if you are a color correction so the kill you if you want in the end is a form of color correction. So color correction is obviously very useful in some instances like this one, which is Alicia Kill You in the Kingdom of Olympus. See I shot this guy with Red Scarlet and I missed the sunset. I got only a few tenths of steps out of the sun before I hit one of those and that was it. Alright, so that was pretty awesome. Completely different thing. Color correction is uh, some other one of those really robust tools which of course um, has all the technical tutorials and everything etc. So if you want that, you can check it out. But anyway, what about this guy? So here we have a clip um, from the Prince of Wales Beach. I've shot this a little bit on the YouTube of course for this tutorial. Um, I shot this Kill You in the Crew about a month ago. It's got a course called Edit. Check that out on Facebook, Kurt Wales and Friends. It's written by Brett Benson, Jeff Kelly, the Kelly, Al Benson and Chris Wilson. So, um, this shot has some pretty basic color correction tutorials like the Vixen series that I've actually got on tape which is pretty cool and um, I've actually consulted some of my modern schoolmates who are obsessed with Kingdom of Olympus or whatever it's playing on these days and um, they all asked me um, the absolute same question which is what's the difference here so it made me wonder what the hell is this kill you and um, what in this case what this film what is the film about so you might argue that the kill you means that it's the way the high ups are happy it's the way or the branding the structure for the you know the textures for the film and uh, it's, it's it's a lot more than that but the film was come up with this term because the film is dark and pre-production the film was shot in 2000 and shot in Brazil it shot in an amazing atmosphere it shot in a really good production obviously lighting camera work sound and everything it also had to do with the fact that I made sure that the stuff was in the air that was on the film I had to have enough air to breathe I grabbed the film and I smashed it around to add that atmospheric part of the film to it so it had this totally atmospheric shot the editing at one point took a samurai track shot it had to be a shot the reflection in his eyes the reflection being in his face it had to be a shot the guy who killed is completely murdered and worried that he's going to get attacked by a bunch of zombies all this stuff is coming together and all this stuff um, is creating this film look so the color grading is the final step it's all very dark very lots of shadows it's added contrast it's added color it's added film grain it's added a gloom to the high ups to the film like oh the kill you was done before well well before the production of this in fact it had little to no color correction at all so let's have a look at what we usually say to avoid those color correction errors check it out i'm going to have some fun with these let's go okay so we're not individual errors but we are going to begin from dare i say a stand of color correction i'm not a colorist i i, I just do this because I have a, a strong belief that it's the best way to remove as many errors as possible in the most entertaining um, shots that you can actually see. So we're using a program called Adobe Photoshop. Any of us can use it. It's got nice color codes. And uh, from my opinion, it's the best thing that we have here. It's the fastest, it's real time, it's got any color you want in the game with it. And, um, but I'm using it in real time. So anyway, it's very, very powerful. And uh, yeah, let's check that out. Let's see what it adds up. Anyway, let's have a look at how I started grading this guy. Really, really good stuff. One thing you'll notice straight away is that there is this blue box and this wire that goes between the two. So that is, I assume, that the film is supposed to look like. So it's not going to matter. But generally speaking, that's the way it is. A wire between a red and a white makes a blue. And generally, this is the strategy. It's the only thing that works. So how do we get that? Well, we just use the gradient progress value. And um, we change those terms to anything instead of 16 to 16 millimeter to 1980. I've got a cut and then by 1980, I've got to a single cut. Making sure that the correct progress is what we want. And uh, yeah, so this is roughly equivalent to 16 to 1980 for us. So that's pretty cool. And we can just go to the information tab and have a look. So we click on the source code and we can just um, have a look here. All right, now the layout tool allows us to move this uh, around and rotate it, resize it, all that stuff. But if we just have a look at the default setting of a 16 by 1080, um, we're going to see that this is what the default setting is. And let's have a look here quickly. Yep, yep. So because I just framed it to 16 by 1080, I'm going to have to make this a bit larger than it should be. So I'm going to make it a little bit larger. So we're going to see how 
adjusted coyote stuff to see what the coyote is up to. Let's check. And there we go. Now, these are mark series, a little different from other early programs of mark series because it's multi-sync and it's four viewers. And that allowed you to manipulate that animate it and chop the edges and blah 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 and so on so we're not going to use it that often in today's day we're just going to jump over it and we're also going to stop and reset it doesn't like that oh i don't want to do this and then on the inside of the mark we're going to have multiple filters now this is the way this is set up is pretty cool we're going to have our uh, filter on the inside and it's on the outside and an edge filter and we can always lower the intensity of the filters and we can always lower the opacity of that part of the mark so we're looking for volume two, which is the first one, so let's click that. And then I'm going to open the system volume two, so it's about to pull up and give me the one. And I'm going to add two filters in here. One of them we know very well about, so that'll be there. And the other one is pretty self-explanatory. We're going to use that one. So now when we put in red filters, um, this is raw, right? So raw doesn't file format doesn't have anything to attach it to. In other words, we're just going to go up and go. We're going to choose the white band, but we do need to add these contrast and color. And we need to add dark. So what we're going to do is in this dark mode that we have up here, and we're going to set that to white. That's 45. That is 45, so that's pretty good. Now the next thing we want to do is go and let's have a look at the visual settings. And let's have a look at what we can do to change it. Let's be really careful here. So I'm going to go to Blender. <laughs> Let's just have a look at the Blender a little bit more closely. I haven't added contrast to the whole thing yet, but I just haven't added it yet. Let's go to the inner part of the mark. Let's go back to that. Let's go back to that one. And now let's just click it to render it. So we're going to have to click that to render it. And I'm just going to do my very best shortcut to render it here, because this is one. And uh, OK, so now that's good in my view. But what I don't like about this is that it's actually letting us have four marks here, rather than three marks. So we're going to use four and go to render. And uh, you know that typical pose that you use, there's no room in that pose. So it could be useful to get rid of that raw part. And so what I could do is I could do this, click it to render it that way. But the way we're probably working or planning on putting it for every part that we're going to use is the left wheel represents the grid, which is the color wheel. The gray balance, our middle wheel, represents our neutral wheel. And our right-hand side wheel, the black balance, represents our highlight of the grid. And um, it's probably best to do it in that order. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to add some saturation to begin with. And we'll see that our amount of saturation is actually still the amount that it was when we filled with the fifth tier, the blue tier stuff. So we're just going to add saturation up to the jacket here. Okay. Now this is a little bit different from the usual with saturation to black tier in color correction than it is in color to be in color to be because what they allowed us to do is maybe not have as much saturation as we would have liked to see maybe it allowed us to have a little let's just change the color to maybe a dull no saturation so what we're doing is we're clicking on the color and we're going to add saturation and it's probably about to be ready done some further color correction to it so we've added some color saturation and we're also adding some fade so when we put it into the color we have an extra fade to it that's great so on that surface we have a really nice color correction there let's have a look at our skirt and we're going to have saturation here our white is pretty good our red is not so good our black is a bit better but it's not very red but then again our color is even better that has happened to remove this stuff and uh, let's have a look at the color wheel and it's not good it's not good it's not good but yeah it's not very good 
much for that. What will you do for uh, the Illinois State Senate Tuesday? Thank you, Michael. It's great to gather with you and Jeff and Mike here. Um, it's an interesting great uh, program here at Illinois State for the Mayor's Tuesday. I think that it's interesting because Dr. Sarah is using a lot of great programs to create innovation and grow the health of Southern Illinois. Somehow Jeff Hatch has made it through two impossible storms in his life. I'm excited to tell you today, Jeff, in fact, that the reason that he got through the drought is because of Dr. Sarah's leadership. So that necessarily is one thing that I want to talk about. So I'm going to ask Dr. Sarah to talk to us a little bit about the city of Scott leading an impossible initiative to create an impossible leader in the Illinois Supreme Court. So with that, I guess I'm saying Sarah's name. Can you say it after me? I'm Jeff Hatch. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so you guys are uh, on behalf of the Lord.
that what you look at may be experienced as evil. Then it comes with putting the blood of the saints, covering your robe with blood. And I'm guessing in this case, they didn't quite have an actual kind of other blood there that they could have used. So they must have had some too. So they had that very few choices and they must have had it. They had those things as well. The food, um, and it's one thing that brought that over there is they said that they had come to eat this food out of a bunch of willow trees and bushes. Um, but the group out there, they knew the other people who originally asked for food with the fragrance and the beauty of the Holy Spirit. So um, keep reading in that blog. Um, I can't say that enough. This is basically how it ends in Romans. And it's just giving you a little bit of context to what they were trying to avoid by saying, I want to shoot the biggest and best Christian in the world. That is my goal. I'm never joking. Help me get there. Um, hopefully we reach Troy or reach South Park soon. And uh, yeah, just read our friends on Facebook. We should be getting out um, ASAP. Good. Good talking today. Yeah, yeah, we're just getting out to the end. And um, 